What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode of Smash JT. I was talking to a buddy of mine, Abbas Lecira. I believe that's how you say it. Uh, regarding in television, Amico, and more uh, directly, Tommy Tellerico. And it came up during conversation about my feelings about Tommy, why I fell for the whole, the, the dog and pony show. And... I brought up to him, like, there's a video idea right there. Where I went wrong with Tommy. Technology. Technology. And you're ahead of the game. You have to have <laughs> the games. And that's the, the biggest thing where people can say as much negative stuff as they want about in television. But when you, and you're going to play them, when you play the games and you see the controller and you hear all the information about it, you're like, holy crap. Where did I go wrong with Tommy Tellerico? I think this can all be traced back to the type of person that he is. Now, the haters, if you will, will all say he's narcissistic, uh, wants to be right all the time, surrounds himself with yes people, uh, always plays the victim. Uh, it goes on and on and on about the, the personality traits and type. And that that would be so easy to just say that and rant about that but i feel like it goes a lot further a lot deeper i feel like where i went wrong with tommy was he was very relatable on a human level somebody who yes had the cars the rock star fame life it was it was easy to be swept under the that 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 rug of, of entertainment and excitement and just blown away by that lifestyle. But once you peel that onion layer back, Tommy was human. He would interact. He'd have full on conversations and talk to you like a friend, like somebody that you've known since high school and you could relate to and have conversations with and feel like you were connecting on a much deeper level than just you know, surface level, all oh, business to business relationship. Like, no, this is actually a good dude that, that, that cares. And I don't want this video to come across as like, oh, he's definitely not any of that. Because I think deep down, I think he wanted this in television Amico thing to succeed. I think he really had the passion there. And just because <laughs> as of now, it hasn't worked out doesn't mean his initial intentions weren't pure. Now, there's a lot to unpack from that, but before I even go there, what I was talking about with the Boss Lake Seal about this was how, how Tommy's relatable to so many different people on so many different levels. Tommy is a vegan. Tommy doesn't drink. He doesn't do drugs. I am, I don't do drugs either, but I am definitely not a vegan and I definitely drink. Um, but I could still connect with Tommy on, on the gaming realm, on, on the level of, you know, retro gaming, loving the passion for the video game industry and just wanting to see more come from it. Uh, Vasily Seal was saying like he is a vegan. He doesn't drink. Um, when he interviewed with Tommy and talked to him, they connected on on those things. So it's just people would connect to Tommy a, a lot of different ways from their lifestyles. And Tommy was extremely relatable on a lot of different levels. And I don't look at that as Tommy was manipulating people. I don't look at that as um, he's tricking people. I genuinely look back at that and being like, I think Tommy really did have a passion and a care here for this thing to succeed. And, and from that, I also was on Team Tommy. Because I'm like, this guy has a lot of passion. And wouldn't it be cool for me, personally, to know somebody that did something that made a difference in the industry? And that's, I think, where I got swept up in the madness, if you will. Now, regarding the Intellivision Amico, where that all went wrong and, and why uh, 
Tommy was a challenging person to trust is when you start involving not just money, but a lot of money, like millions and millions of dollars worth of money. I'm all about accountability uh, to a point of frustration to a lot of my viewers. But I feel like Tommy didn't have any accountability for the money that was coming in. And it was mysteriously disappearing on, on paychecks to employees and rent to offices unnecessarily worldwide. There were loans being signed with, with people that were just, uh, just questionable loans, you know, a hundred dollars for every console. Uh, that's either uh, extremely cocky and confident or batshit insane. You have no idea what you're doing and you think that this thing is going to sell legitimately 17 to 25 million units before you've even sold one. And and maybe, maybe I place a little bit of blame on me uh, because I didn't speak out enough. I, I, I definitely did speak out, but I was also balancing that with excitement and rah rah let's do this but without one unit ever being created for public consumption to actually purchase and play i guess we could just say there, there were some high hopes there and and when it comes to tommy tellerico and where i went wrong with tommy it, it was all surrounding the issue of trust. I, I I trusted his word over the haters, if you will. I believed him because that was a tangible, real life person in front of me telling me things on location with physical products in front of me. And it just, if you could put yourself in my shoes just for a minute, I know it's so easy in hindsight for people to be like, oh, you're an idiot. You invested $10,000 and you lost it. You know, dumb money. You, you, you deserve to lose it. All right. All, all you, I told you so people go, go talk to me about GameStop. But as far as being in the moment with Tommy, it was really hard to take a step back and look at anything rationally, especially with the information that I had coming in. And again, I, I attribute that to either Tommy was flat out lying or he had unrealistic hopes and expectations and dreams for the future success of a console like the Intellivision Amico that has never sold a single unit. So I guess where I went wrong with Tommy was trust. I trusted him. I thought he was a friend, but... Not the kind of friend like a business relationship. Oh, okay, I give you this money, I make some money, which that's a part of it, but that wasn't by any stretch the large portion of it. I invested because I believed in Tommy. I, I looked at him as a, a friend, someone who gave me inside access to a new console, and I wanted to reciprocate that. By, by no pressure from Tommy, I want to be clear about that. People think Tommy pressured me into it. No, no. Um, but after seeing the lies and the, uh, the the just mistruths, if you will, from what Tommy was saying uh, about the, the empty promises of making money back with this thing in the long run and this thing is on the launch pad, we just need to get over that hump. I, I think that was the, the complete downfall of the entire operation. There was a lot of, I don't know who to trust with this. A lot of information that I've heard and you don't know who to believe, what to believe. The rumors that they were renting the office from Nick Richard, the, the CFO, uh, and that was his office and the Intellivision was paying him money. I cannot confirm that, but that's, that's a rumor that I've heard. Um, and if that's the case, it's not necessarily nefarious. Except when, if the only reason was to make money and give money to your buddy and use the idea of a console as, as the uh, 
the veil to shroud over the eyes of people to be able to launder money to your friends and think people are investing at a console. I don't believe that to be true, though. Like I said, I've, I played the, the uh, customer uh, or the dev kits and it was fun. It's not $350 with one controller fun or whatever they raised the price to, but it was fun. And where I went wrong with Tommy was just trusting everything he said. And outside of a few instances, not questioning. Not enough. A lot of valuable lessons that I learned from this experience. But at the same time, I'm still in a place right now where I don't know what to think about who Tommy Tallarico actually is. As of this recording, he's still not public facing. He's not making uh, any kind of public announcements or anything like that. His father has passed away. Um, and my sincerest condolences for that, Tommy. But we haven't heard from him since. And yes, I know on uh, television said they've entered a quiet period. But there's, there's a lot of things in the background that we don't know for sure. And there are some things that I do know in the background, for sure, that I would love to make videos on, but I'm not that type of YouTuber. Now, it is something that I would maybe consider visiting down the road, um, but it's not something that I want to converse about right now, because personally, I don't want to have any kind of impact on somebody and their life like that. If that makes sense. Anyways, I'm going to leave the video right there. That's where I went wrong, Tommy. And I'd like to think we all learned a few lessons along the way here. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, you stay smashing. Smash to change.